Some teachers contribute to the effective learning outcomes of students as well as the environment and teaching methodology. While some teenagers will be telling us more about their teacher at school, we're also going to be discussing with an education specialist and a teacher on our Young Leaders Spot. Remember, we have more educational resource content on English Sense and Academics today, as well as Voters Box and Global Opportunities. Hello and welcome to the Teens Global Show. I am Ijoma TGF, the amazing host for today. Don't forget to follow us on our social media handles at Teens Global and also at Ijoma TGF. All right, so let's go to the Teens Time Archives and see what teenagers have to say about their teacher at school. is meant to teach the teenager the basic things that will help the teenager in the future and also positive things that will bring the child um, abilities to become real. I will describe my teachers as a responsible, cool, always busy, hard-working teachers. They always look after the affairs of the students and the well-being of the academics. My teacher teaches me where anything I ask him is he or she answers me. They lead me through the path that I want to go. Teenagers have so many problems with the teenagers. And first of all, the teenagers feel so big of themselves because they are passing through, um, through things that adults are also seeing, like menstruation. So they always feel that they are adults. I would not like to receive instructions from their teachers. Some of their teachers are harsh, especially when they are teaching. Some of the students may not understand their teaching. If, they, if the student asks them to explain, they could not be able. At times, the teachers may not, as in, they will not have the understanding, they, or they cannot explain the thing that the student asks them to explain. Some students found it, find it difficult to adhere to simple instruction. Like teenagers, they would like, whenever they are asked to do something, they won't do it. So they feel that they, feel that they are adults, they are not supposed to be teaching treated like children, they're supposed to be treated like adults. Mostly in the part of the teenagers, they feel too big to listen to the teachers whenever the teachers are talking to them. Rather than for them to listen to what the teacher is telling them, they are busy making noise. And mostly male teachers, they try to harass the female students by asking them out, by sleeping with them in order to gain, in order to ask them that they are going to pass their exams. The teachers are meant to teach the teenagers the right thing, not corrupting them or teaching them the bad ways. Instead, the teachers are meant to teach the teenagers the good things and the good ways to come. My teacher has helped me in so many ways by leading me to the right paths and he, answer, he answers the question I ask him and he also teaches me to make sure that I understand. Depends on the way they attract to each other, like, like for example, if the teacher is friendly, and the teenager might like a subject very well and be help her. The teenager is meant to obey the rules and regulations set by the teacher and also obey everything the teacher said to, to him or her. And the teacher is expected to tell the teenager the right thing and not teach them negative things in order to impact good learning on them. A good relationship between the teacher and the teenager will help the teenager a lot because one, it will make the teenager to be close to the teacher when he or she does not understand something. The teenager can be able to go to the teacher and ask the teacher for some help on what he or she does not understand. My name is Sharon Ahimbi. My name is Amy Benjamin. My name is King David. My name is Fatima Imurlake. My name is Valerie Vishnia and you're watching Teens Global Show. And you're watching Teens Global Show. Keep watching. Keep touch that dial. I'm watching you. Subscribe. Don't touch the dial. Thank you. It's English Saints. We are looking at words expressing continuous actions. Words expressing continuous actions are known as verb tenses. 
There are past continuous tense, present continuous tense, and future continuous tense. The continuous tense is formed with the verb be and ing form of the verb. Past continuous tense. The past continuous tense is used to show that the action was ongoing till a certain time in the past. Examples are, I was playing football. It was raining yesterday. We were speaking English. John was chatting with his friends. Birds were flying high in the sky. Present continuous tense. The present continuous tense expresses that the action is ongoing, still going on, and hence continuous. Examples are, I am dancing. She is reading. We are walking. It is running. You are eating. The future continuous tense. This is used to express action that will be happening at a particular moment in the future. Examples are, I will be seeing you next month. She won't be watching the news at eight. Sarah will be traveling around the world. I will be assisting Peter tomorrow. Students will be studying at the library tonight. The, a special shout out to Endurance, Blessing, and Divine Favor for sending in their responses on the hyphenated compound words. We hope to see more of your responses in our subsequent questions for the week. Remember to, sub Remember to follow us on all social media handles at Teens Global. For participation, sponsorship, and advert placement, reach out to us using the details on the screen. So my name is Sharon Ahimbi. My name is Amy Benjamin. My name is King Daisy. My name is Fatima Imrelaki. My name is Valerie Vishne, and you're watching and Teens Global Show. And you're watching Teens Global Show. Keep watching. Keep Touch that down. I'm watching you. Subscribe. Don't touch the dial. Thank you. On academics today, we are looking at balanced diets. Balanced diet is a food preparation which provides needed nutrients to maintain good health. Balanced diet promotes healthy eating with a balanced amount of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, mineral fiber in normal proportions. Nutrition is vital for the body and all of its systems to function properly. By having good nutrition, it will help you maintain a healthy weight, reduce body fat, provide your body with energy, promote good sleep, and generally make you feel better. Eating lots of vegetables and fruits is one of the most important diet habits. Vegetables and fruits are packed with nutrients such as antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber that helps you maintain a healthy weight by keeping you full longer. The benefits of healthy eating. Healthy eating promotes weight loss. It ensures an effective diabetes management. It helps prevent heart disease and stroke reduces cancer risk, provides strong bones, teeth, and healthy growth. It promotes better moods and mindset and improves memory and brain functions. This is the much we can take on academics today. A special shout out to all those who have been sending in their responses through our comment sessions on our videos, as well as answering the questions for the week. To follow us on all social media pages at Teens Global for participation, sponsorship and advert placement. You can see the details on the screen and reach out to us. Hello and welcome to the Teens Global Show. It's exciting, educating, informative, entertaining. It's the Teens Global Show. Every citizen is supposed to understand the aspect of the constitution so that you're able to know when you are right are being trapped or not. We can practice everything constitution and we need 
was written in 1999. With a global focus on young people's development, showcasing Teens Time Series, Young Leaders Spot, English Sense, Academics Today, Voters Box, and Global Opportunities. Education is the most powerful report that you can use to change the world. Most people are not informed. Through this program, information is... Entrepreneur is someone who takes up challenge, owning a business, and that's make profit. They go. They have this key. They have built on the self to be an entrepreneur. It's a must watch for schools, homes, communities, companies, organizations, and all stakeholders. Follow us on social media at Think Global. My name is Deborah Adegoke. My name is Success Ibonosa. Virtual education is using technology to deliver the same educational goals that would have been delivered in a physical environment, outside that physical environment. That's basically virtual education. It's using the internet, computers, smartphones to deliver on educational goals. For now, we cannot take a percentage of the effectiveness of virtual education because it's the new normal that uh, we all find ourselves recently due to the advent of uh, COVID-19. There's positive impact and there's also negative impact. I will dwell more on the positive impact because it supersedes the negative uh, impact of the virtual learning. First is that it has created the awareness in Nigeria to migrate and accept and adapt to the new normal that was that is that was necessitated by the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic. So it means that I cannot I can I may not be able to give the statistics of how many people have migrated to e-learning now, but I know a huge chunk of people have resorted to online business meetings. It enables learning outside the physical environment, meaning that you don't have to be constrained by a physical classroom. The teacher can be in the comfort of their home, the students can be in the comfort of their home, or wherever. It doesn't have to be at home. And then they can access the learning materials, they can deliver the learning materials and meet the educational goals that need to be met. Another advantage is because it forces you to use technology to learn, a lot of our Nigerian children are learning to interact with technology very often. On a normal day, how many times do they take computer science in a week? Maybe once a week. But now, every day, they are doing computer science compulsory. So they are learning best practices. They are learning things that will enable them to compete with their needs in other countries. And it's a benefit of, of virtual education because these are resources they are going to need for life. Another benefit is the fact that it forces parents and children to work together on educational goals. Before now, some parents thought it was the job of the schools to deliver on educational goals and they don't really have a part to play. But now, they are the key moderators of their children's education. So they're forced to work with their children and that has actually caused bonding. We've seen a lot of parents, they've understood their children's struggles. They've seen how they can pitch in and help. And some of the children are even doing much better at school because of that. Another thing is that the educational resources are stored. So you can reinforce, you can use them again and again. You can go back to them again and again and learn at your own pace. So the challenges of virtual learning in the country are high rate of data, it, uh, it's poor network, uh, lack of devices, you know, there are devices that are needed to engage in an online uh, training and then some parents are not knowledgeable about it. So there is um, a low uh, tech savvy. So and those are the major challenges and the power outage is also another challenge. Because you can decide to set up a, a virtual training and then the, the audience you are trying to capture may be out of power. It's a developing world. We have children across all sorts of socioeconomic strata. Some of these kids cannot even afford a phone. Some of them cannot afford internet. Some of them are not even within internet range. They're going to school. So if you have kids in that kind of situation, virtual education excludes them from learning. So that's one major challenge that we have here. There's also issue of power because whether to use computer or phone, even internet requires power. And if power is interrupted and then there's no power for these children to access the internet or use their phone on their laptops, that automatically excludes them from learning. Now, on the education part, it has exposed our teacher and created the consciousness in there to always seek capacity building. And so the capacity level of our, of our teachers now have improved. 
everybody is not thinking tech savvy in order to be able to have access to trainings online to improve on their skills on how to deliver those virtual trainings so and then oh virtual education is something that if it is not well monitored and well you know tailored for the kids it can they can be distracted they can be on the computer and they're not learning anything because of distractions another thing is predators the internet is not safe the internet is not a closed gated community it is open and there are people who are just waiting online for kids to come up and then they will show interest these kids cannot determine for themselves who is real and who is fake a lot of times they're just chatting the predators online who want to take advantage of this period to you know influence kids get kids to do all sorts of stuff it has actually make information and skill acquisition to be at our beck and call that means you can actually go on the internet and nail whatever uh, uh, skill that you want to learn all you need to do is to download the video of the training and then put yourself to it and then you get it done children are not supposed to be in front of a screen to person it impacts negatively on them mentally and psychologically Think about yourself as an adult when you spend all day in front of the computer. How do you feel afterwards? Drained, right? Emotionally drained, physically drained. You have a headache sometimes. So imagine keeping your children. I think the, one of the most disadvantages of virtual learning is you may not have that personal contact with kids. For adult learning education, for instance, you can easily say you are, you know, Honing up to 90%, you know, effectiveness, right? But for kids, for teenagers, you know, they have, they need this personal contact. But online or virtual learning does not provide this personal contact with the kids. No matter how good virtual learning is, it cannot build social, social interaction. The kids are not seeing themselves. There's something that happens when you are in the presence of your teacher, and that cannot happen over the internet. No matter how hard you try, it can happen virtually. There's a social interaction, there's a social connection. Let's not forget that physical education is not just about teaching books. It's also about teaching social interaction. It's, teaching, it's also about teaching how to work with other people, teamwork, and all those things don't, don't exist virtually. Recently, somebody asked me who I thought the key stakeholder in education currently was. And I told them that the first key stakeholder to me currently is the parent. Parents, it is your duty right now. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you are teacher, you are moral instructor, you are parent, you are administrator, you are provider. I know it's a lot to juggle, but this is where we find ourselves. You are a major stakeholder in your child's education. You have to be there to make sure that they're learning. You have to be there to make sure that they're not getting distracted. You have to be there to protect them from predators. You need to make sure that your children are keeping up with their education. If not, they will lag behind and it will affect them for the rest of their life. possible because their parent goes to work. A parent goes to work and they have a lot to do to cater for the family. So they may not have all the luxury of time to sit with the kids for them to take their trainings. Except if the government is not changing the curriculum to a night training, whereby they finish for the day and then they have the night to the kids. So, so that is the only way we can monitor the kids. So you are a stakeholder in your education, students. If you are listening to this, children, teenagers, you are a stakeholder in your education. I used to, when I was in university, there's this thing that used to happen. Maybe like when things get really tough and I feel like there's a lot of workload, I would ask myself, whose name is going to be on the certificate? Is it my father's name or my lecturer's name? No, it's my name. So what grade do I want associated with my name eventually? And that always spurred me to work harder. At the end of the day, this is your education, this is your Learning is a two-way conduit, right? And so the parents just have to encourage the kids to learn and then make sure uh, they provide the necessary environment and the materials needed for the kids to be properly prepared for learning. So that's on the part of the parents. So my name is Sharon Ahimbi. My name is Amy Benjamin. My name is King Daisy. My name is Fatima Imralaki. And you're watching Teens Global Show. Keep watching. Touch that down. I'm watching you. Subscribe. Don't touch the dial. Thank you. Teens Global Show is a program for teenagers and young adults focused on contemporary issues such as life skills development, leadership, career, academics, personal and professional growth. We also provide educational resource content. We feature young leaders and their impact. 
We also talk about and showcase voters' rights and responsibilities, as well as informing you about global opportunities. We'll start with is the Obama Foundation Scholars Program for dynamic, collaborative, and rising leaders from around the world to participate in an innovative one-year academic and leadership experience in the United States. Now, the deadline for this application is February 5th, 2021. Ashoka Making More Health Co-Creation Accelerator 2021 program for social entrepreneurs with a 50,000 euros in funding. Life application is February 7, 2021. The link is on the screen. We also have the World Bank and Financial Times Blog Essay Writing Competition 2021 for teenagers between ages 16 and 19. The essay topic is, how has your learning been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? Now, if you're a teenager, this opportunity is for you. The deadline for submission of this essay is February 15, 2021. And finally, apply for a fully funded master's degree in mathematical science at the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences. Deadline for this application is March 31st, 2021. This is the much we have on global opportunities. And don't forget you can reach out to us for guides or more details on this global opportunities. Remember to follow us on all social media handles at Teens Global for participation, sponsorships and advert placement. Reach out to us with the details on your screen. This is the much we have on global opportunities. Hello and welcome to the Teens Global Show. It's exciting, educating, informative, entertaining. It's the Teens Global Show. Every citizen is supposed to understand the aspect of constitution so that you're able to know when you are right are being trapped or wrong. can practice the written constitution so that the written was written in 1999. With a global focus on young people's development, showcasing Teens Time Series, Young Leaders Spot, English Sense, Academics Today, Voters Box, and Global Opportunity. Education is the most powerful we that you can use to change the world. Most people are not informed. Through this program, information is... The entrepreneur is someone who takes up challenge owning a business and that's a big profit. They go, they have this key, they have built up themselves to be an entrepreneur. It's a must watch for schools, homes, communities, companies, organizations and all stakeholders. Follow us on social media at Think Global. In the words of Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. What this tells us is that no child should be left behind. Inclusive education, blended learning and open education, it's the future. And it's a wrap for today on the Teens Global Show. I hope you've learned so much. You can also follow us on our social media platforms. You can follow us on our website to get more information and also tips on how to apply for those global opportunities. We want to feature your school, your impact, your works, everything about you. So contact us today for participation, sponsorship and advert placements. I am Ijoma TGF the host for today. See you same time, same station next week. Follow us on social media. Don't forget that. Bye for now.